It's just using the science that drives behavior, but doing it for a bigger purpose, which is change the world in ways that matter to the people that are using it. So we'll analyze your bank data and we'll tell you, here's your carbon footprint. And then we'll recognize things like if you bought from a secondhand clothing store. Welcome back to another episode of A Kiwi Original. Today on the show, I'm joined by Ben Gleisner from Kogo, a app that helps you if you're into sustainable living, but it's a little bit complex, this makes it easy. And the reason that matters is the easier it is, the easier it is to then nudge businesses to change their behaviors to pick up more of the customers that want to see us living in a better future, a better planet. So first of all, Ben, Welcome to the show. Well said. You can go out and pitch for us if you want. <laughs> I like the product. I actually um, I ended up doing some mentoring at Auto Digital, and Kogo was um, there was one of the young women there uh, pitching Kogo. So I think she made an impact right. because I, I picked up on it. Um, the the awesome. first question I wanted to ask you about Ben is the the app allows you as a as a consumer or person to to rank the things that matter to you. What are some of the different things that matter to Kiwis at the moment? Great question. Um, yeah, we've been around about nine years, uh, nearly 10 actually now. Originally as an idea called Conscious Consumers. So we, we've been around collecting insights on what Kiwis care about. And that's actually changed uh, quite a lot over time. Um, I mean, things like at the moment, waste minimization is still the sort of most important issue for Kiwis. They definitely don't want animal, animal cruelty, so they don't want to buy products that have got, um, you know, animal cruelty concepts, or at least the uh, ones that do advocate for good animal welfare. Uh, they like them. And thirdly, they're looking for um, businesses that support charities in their community. Now, over the last nine years, that's the top three. But what we're seeing is issues like climate change uh, are becoming more and more of an important thing for Kiwis. Um, when we first started, um, charities was the top issue. People, they wanted to buy from businesses that were supporting community groups. Mm -hmm. That's actually becoming less important. Waste is currently number one. And that's sort of been interesting to watch these trends around the stuff Kiwis care about. One of the things they can select, 70% uh, of people say they want to buy from businesses that support New Zealand made products and stock those. So it's, that's another one that's coming more and more into the fore. So yeah, it's great to be on the show. What was the the original idea for conscious consumers and then moving it into this app? What was the the need that you wanted to to solve uh, overall? Yeah, I think I mean I previously to this was working uh, as an economist uh, at the Treasury, so I did my master's in climate change economics um, fifteen years ago. I'm getting very old um, <laughs> and went to Treasury worked on the climate, the emissions trading scheme, worked on the New Zealand government uh, international climate change negotiating team, and then did social welfare reform, the investment approach to welfare, then did the living standards framework. So a whole bunch of government work to try and sort of correct what I saw as like governments not measuring the right things, or at least doing stuff around social environmental good. But the driver that got me out of government and setting up conscious consumers was just so slow you know like in the end if we want to change social and environmental issues that we all know need to be solved i think government's going to do a bit but I, I guess i believe way back then that there was a massive number of individuals that really wanted to be part of the solution themselves they just didn't want to like point the finger at a government and say you solve it or you solve it you know like actually we all are you know causing the climate crisis we all are creating the plastics that are in the oceans and you know we, we are creating the economic sort of you know uh environment around wage differentials like this is us we are consuming things i think that the motivation was to be like people are wanting to feel like they're more part of the solution and that their spending is actually contributing to a world that they really value and so that was the motivator was we want to solve these big problems but uh, I don't know if government's going to do it alone. And so it was about empowering individuals to say, look, we, we can help you understand your impact in the world and help it be more aligned with the things that matter to you. And it will use data. It uses technology. It uses the things that disrupt the world, right? Look at Uber, look at Airbnb, look at the things that are Amazon, right? Look at these things that create change and behavior. It's technology, it's data. 
and that's what we sort of went hard um, from nine years ago now on. So here we are. I think that's the the difference. I mean, what a what a, a background and esteemed career to come in <laughs> to this. I mean, it's easy when you you hear that you know someone's built an app. Uh, it's hard to differentiate, you know, how deep those apps go, and it could be Airbnb or Uber, or it could be just a very lightweight thing that comes and goes. Uh, it sounds like you've got your your head around the data and the need. What was maybe some of the the barriers around um, uh, the banking side of it, connecting up some of those data sources that you know historically were in closed environments that you that you can now get into? That's a yeah, great question. Um, I guess back to that job you said around like, what are we trying to get done here? And I guess the, the app has a purpose. And as I said, we launched it nine years ago as conscious consumers. Right then, the purpose was still, we want to help our uh, people that use our app to align their spending and their values. And so right back at the beginning, <laughs> you won't believe this, but we had people when they visited businesses, they'd scan a QR code to sort of like show that they'd been somewhere. Um, but like we do now, or at least some of us do. Um, and so nine years ago, that was the technology we were using to see where people are spending. And then they'd use their GPS to check in. And, and I guess the main innovation in 2015 was a partnership with Paymark New Zealand. So the way it works is say, Ryan, you care about businesses paying a living wage to their staff. You know, the app would tell you where to go and you'd go there, you'd, scan a QR code if you could be bothered and pull the phone out and stuff. And then it would let you know and it would recognize you saying, well done, that was a business that paid a living wage or it would tell you other things about the business. What we did in 2015 with Paymark is we did what's called card linking, which allows you to register your debit card or credit card and it securely stores the 16 digits so that every time you buy with that card in one of the businesses that has being on is on Kogo or conscious consumers, it would register it. So we, we some, somehow like within like a week got like 2000% more data because we're actually finding people, we're just not really scanning these things. But when you put it into a, their banking card, it makes it almost effortless. Um, so that was one big thing we did, which allowed us to then really sort of do a step change in the business uh, because we then could give all this insight back to the business like, hey, I don't know, Mexicali Fresh, for example, uh, did you know all your customers really care about animal welfare and, and free range meats and things? And that actually got the business to start stocking free range meat. So the whole idea of this was we were able to motivate businesses to adopt new practices. Another example, Rogan Vagabond, one of my favorite uh, bars down here in Cuba Street, they saw on the platform that people really cared about the living wage. You know, people, not just their own customers, but people in Wellington. It was the second most important issue for people that shopped in Wellington Central. This is 2016, this happened. So then they were like, well, we're going to go living wage, you know. And so they went living wage. And then we, the platform then pushed out an email to people and said, hey, Ryan, you know, we know you care about living wage. Um, let's raise a glass for the workers at Rogan Vagabond at a bar that we know you buy from and they found that you spent twice as much money in the following month than you had previous. So we were able to prove the ROI. And then they'd send a message to me. I didn't know about Broken Vega Bomb, but I did care about living wage. And it would say, hey, Ben, you should raise a glass to the workers of Broken Vega Bond that you've helped get living wage status. Let's go and grab a drink at this bar that we know we hadn't bought from. And they attracted 50 new people that had never bought from them wow. before. That is the sort of opportunity at scale to change the world and everyone wins you know like it's a market correction it's nothing more than just what markets are supposed to do right provide information and allow people to you know make sure that the decisions they're making are you know the ones that matter and at the moment it's just yeah markets are failing in some ways so yeah i can go into the economics of it but maybe we should well, any other well, questions before we go on to that i think it's really impressive what insights have driven what I paired away there is two key things. Firstly, that um, early on, it was easy to get people to scan QR codes and register their values because that's your that's your innovators, right? That's really at the edge of the, the start of the curve, but it drops off when you get to early mainstream because it's friction. Oh, so yeah, friction. by removing that friction and, 
uh, conscious consumers taking the responsibility for uh, checking in and seeing what gets spent, then now you've got the power both to that consumer, but more importantly, now you're effectively uh, allowing businesses to see the return on investment they're getting uh, yeah. and for them to market to new yeah. consumers based on their causes rather than the products, features and price, benefits. Price. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, yeah, you explained it exactly that. It's like a platform. And again, where we were in 2016 is now four years on and we've made even major improvements on the amount of data we now have uh, with a with a platform, with a, I guess, a technology called open banking, which I can talk about. But the uh, the card stuff we only saw when you bought from a business that had already consented to share the data with us. So you had two side consent where Mexicali Fresh had to sign something to say, yes, I'm happy to pass on the data to you. And consumers that signed up also had to say, yes, I'm happy. So there was a bit of friction in the sort of ability to collect data, whereas now, with open banking, when you sign up, we're able to access every single transaction in every bank account and every credit card that you've had for 12 months in history and in real time, and then analyze that, um, which is a completely different level of um, almost, you know, impact or potential, because now we know where everyone, we don't even need the business to sign up. We can walk into New World and say, hey, you're just losing like hundreds of customers a week because competitors are doing stuff around climate change and, and you're losing the people because they say they care about it and they're engaging with content on the competitors profile on Kogo and we're watching the customers walk. That's hugely powerful. It'll motivate systemic change, which is our plan. Very exciting indeed. And I think what I liked about this, and this is the first time, I, so I downloaded your app as part of my research before this, this interview. And I thought, I, I wonder how the connectivity with open banking is going to go because it's been in the UK for a while. I, I know it's not new over there, but here it's new. And um, that the notes I've written down there is that three things you need to know if you're um, wanting to sign up for Kogo uh, and connect your bank is you've got to know your banking password to start with. I've <laughs> yes. In the UK, just to be clear, it's just so much more mature as a concept. Like in the UK, you don't need to know that because you just get taken to your app and you put your thumbprint in and it does it like that. You get taken to your mobile banking app. So we're dealing with like Kiwi, you'd think in, you know, innovation and I don't know, we would have been, we got FPOS here like first. You'd think we would have got this stuff sorted, but we are really pushing against the, uh, yeah, anyway, you're right. Number one, you've got to know your password. That, and your, that's uh, the first thing. Uh, then secondly, get a two-factor authentication. Know that you're going to get a text message with four digits in it put that in uh, and then third know your banking app four digit code and then you're yeah, in and ANZ you're with yeah yeah ANZ and the other bank you've got connected now is okay. Westpac with the with the rest to come is that right Kiwi Bank here is coming um, probably in a week uh, ASB within a yeah we've got them all by the end of this calendar year so yeah now from there I put into the app it asked me what I I cared about so I put in uh, carbon conscious measure and reduce yeah. the emissions and yeah. NZ made uh, those nice. companies that offer New Zealand made products okay. what will it then do from there if I let's say spend for the next month um, at places yeah. without changing my behavior yeah. what what will it then give me in terms of cool. uh, insights good good question so the first sort of core feature we've got um, in the app is we're seeing climate is like quite a compelling and a lot of our users across the world are like saying, that's really the thing that at the moment is super important for me. So the first thing you'll get is we will have securely um, pulled and we've like got the best penetration test passed by, you know, security. So people are like, oh, you're holding onto my banking data. I have confidence that you know, you hear all the time banks actually, even the banks themselves are giving away the wrong statement to the wrong people and various things. So it's, you know, banking data is not always perfectly secure. In our case, I feel like we've got almost better and I won't, you know, put my hand on my heart and say it's guaranteed, but better security than some of the banks in terms of how we hold that. So the first thing is we will have looked at your banking data and we will let you know what your carbon footprint is. So in other words, we give you information on instead of going on to a sort of online survey and trying to remember what flights you took and 
whether you're buying 20 grand worth of whatever's every year, we'll do that. So we'll analyze your bank data and we'll tell you, here's your carbon footprint for all of the transactions that you've connected into Kogo. And then we'll recognize things like if you bought from a secondhand clothing store or if um, you'll let me us know if you're a vegetarian, for example, and we'll then reduce your uh, footprint for your grocery spending. Because we don't know you bought a tofu or T-bone steak, but we do ask you what your diet is. So the first thing you'll get is this sort of positive recognition for the good stuff that you're already doing to reduce your carbon footprint. And then there's a massive sort of set of sort of behavioral science that like nudges you. It might be in three months, we'll do like an electric car nudge where it will be, hey, you spent about two grand in petrol. That's probably about, I don't know, five tons of carbon. If you weren't electric, you'd be saving this. So there's a whole lot of these, like we call the ethical nudge, which is to recognize people for that. Oh, you just bought in a secondhand shop. That saved your footprint by this much. Or you've told us you're vegetarian. We can see your countdown spending coming in. Because you're vegetarian, you're saving this much. So there's a whole lot of positive reinforcement. And then every now and again, we'll just be like, hey, you know, you, you told us, I can see your energy bill. If, if you got double glazing, you know, if you did have double glazing, you'd save this much. So it's that. And there's other people doing it. We'll tell you, you know, there's 2,000 other people in Wellington that went electric car last year and they're saving a certain amount together. And it's like this whole using the science that when you're on booking.com, it will tell you 50 other people that just booked that thing, right? It's just using the science that drives behavior, but doing it for a bigger purpose, which is to ultimately, you know, change the world in ways that matter to the people that are using. Because people don't know, right? Like until no until you know, you, you can't ask someone to change their behavior because it's it's too, it, it's not tangible. It's, it's not no easy. Impact. Yeah, it's too hard. Information's not there. You don't know what your impact is. Like all these are the barriers that we've talked about for 10 years with people and we're overcoming them, you know, each new iteration of the product. And to answer your question, that's climate as a feature. UK, we've launched a living wage wallet as well, which tracks how much of your spending is with businesses that pay a living wage. So it does the same thing, which is, hey, you should move your energy company to a living wage paying energy company because we can see you're not. But really the future is gonna be, we'll know every transaction, we wanna get down to product level, I would absolutely love, and they are coming slowly to the table, at supermarkets or some of the big, um, I know, warehouse groups and you know these types of companies to get to product level so that we can then analyze product level. But in the future, it'll be, we'll know your plastic footprint. We'll know how much percentage of your spendings with businesses that are you know owned and made here, you know, made in New Zealand, for example. You'll have your buy New Zealand made wallet inside the platform. So it'll tell you. And I think that's what people want to do. They want to know that they're actually contributing to a world that actually is something they're having to leave for their kids and that they can walk and you know go home on Christmas knowing that they've actually done something um, every day to sort of support that. So yeah, that's the idea. I, like I, it's a it's an amazing uh, product what you've managed to achieve. I, I, I've seen early iterations of things that were trying to do this when I you know lived in London. I, I remember doing a a, a carbon a CO two tracking. Um, it's just it was a survey and it came out yeah, and said yeah. you're around 50 tons a year yeah, and yeah. you're like four, lot, yeah. four or five times the average because yeah, of right. the business flying around Europe and then back to New Zealand. So I decided to offset and help um, establish wind farms back in New Zealand nice. back then. But I didn't change any of my personal behavior because it was impossible to... I couldn't see who to support and who not to support. I think that's yeah. where this um, yeah. is interesting and using it in a collective way um, where you can see what others are doing. Uh, I remember seeing that there was a, uh, a that in Brisbane with water usage, they tried yeah. to ask people to reduce it. Uh, but the thing that really worked was when they put on your bill, here's where you sit in the league table of your street. And then it yeah. became competitive. Not like I mean, the, the guy, um, one of the advisors we've got in the UK um, on our team uh, there was the founder of um, the Nudge Unit, which is a UK government. So it's out of the number 10 um, cabinet office um, in about, I think, 2012 or something. It was a behavioral economics team 
that is now world renowned. So I studied behavioral economics at uni and you, you always heard about them when we we're at treasury, for example, afterwards, like the nudge unit. And it was basically government was trying to do stuff around water, around people wearing seat belts, around tax returns happening on time. And you can regulate, right? You can go out there and like bloody charge people or whatever it is, incentivize. The way that they've really cracked it in the UK was just around language and around how you position people sometimes relative to others. So things like if you told someone 95% of people had paid their tax by now, that was the most important sentence. And they just, they applied the science team of 15 originally in uh, number 10, that, that the team is now 250 people strong. It's called the behavioral insights team. And they sit outside government advising companies, advising government. And the founder of that yeah, is helping us think about the language. So every little notification you'll start getting has got like wording and it's personalized. It's, it's, it's trying to be positive. It's all like, yeah, it's the science and it's, it's just what the other companies who are getting you to buy shit you probably didn't want in the first place are doing too. Well, marketing is a science and, and nudge yeah. theory is within that marketing arena. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it's a smart way of being more subtle and yeah. letting human behavior decide. Yeah. But that nudge is just a, a nudge to create the question, yeah. then the answer is still within the consumer's mind. It's not a, it's not a force. It's not like manipulation. It's yeah. just, you've told us you want to support businesses that pay a living wage, or you've told us you want to reduce your carbon footprint. All we're doing then is giving you the motivation and the sort of, you know, it's like, I don't know, diet plans, exercise plans, they're the same thing, right? They try and motivate you to do the thing that you've said you're going to do, which I think is far more transparent than say some of the platforms out there that are just, you know, getting you addicted to um, news feeds so that you buy shit that you, you know, I don't know, just hadn't really come to, to actually, that's not the job that they told you they were going to get done for you. And I think there's a massive backlash and that will continue over the next few years um, against some of the big tech platforms because they are not really, um, you know, doing the things that they, are, you know, put on the label, let's say. Well, and, and they've switched, right? They, they've switched from we want to connect the world to well, we want to connect you, understand everything about your interests and monetize it. And so, it's very yeah. hard to extract out of that if you're a business. Yeah. What's interesting about your, um, your app and how it connects into transactions, it still provides a marketing channel to the business mm. that doesn't require those news feeds. So, if, if we connected our NZ made API for all of our licensed well, products, in, yeah. then that can, cr that creates a channel for New Zealand manufacturers to market to consumers in a yeah. good ethical way. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we're saying there's two things important to note is we, we never promote a business that pays us more than one that doesn't. So that's very important. So we are not a sort of platform where you'll suddenly get like a certain brand promoted above another brand because it's the one that pays us. It'll be, you've told us you care about these things. Here are 10 options that you can buy that are New Zealand made, right? The, the, the monetization or how we can make money is that the businesses have a choice to upgrade that basic profile, which just says we've got a New Zealand made product. If they want to add more content, put photos of the staff that work there, whatever, talk about their story. It's, it's not a lot of money. It's like 20 bucks a month for a you know, small business. They can add more information about their business so that when you have the choice of those 10, you might be like, yeah, that's the one I want to go for because I you know, resonate. That's number one reason they pay. The other one is we give insights on the trends that are going on around consumer spending. And so that's another thing that we sell, but it's, the customer wants that they use it they want that stuff sold because they want the businesses to know that they care about these things so it's almost like a, a an, an exchange of data that is in the interest of both parties versus facebook and the like where you sort of a mind of your you know data and then and then without really asking at all for it told to buy this and that and i don't know it's just wrong so that's one thing that we do different is that we don't market the businesses just that they pay us. As you said, all of the buy New Zealand made, we want the, all the living wage businesses are free. We, all, we give them a free listing. So it's all free for those like base level 
um, service uh, to get you promoted. But the second big thing, which I think is important as well, is the destination for this company in the future is a, um, we're currently got 150 shareholders across the country, about 10 different nations actually. So lots of individuals, Steve Tindall and a whole bunch of great Kiwis um, own the company. But the plan for one of the key exit strategies is to give the users the rights to buy out all of the shareholders. So at some point, this platform will be majoritarily owned by the people whose money and whose data we are actually using. And I think that is a key difference than many of the platforms. I can't think of any actually at scale that actually are owned by the people who use it because they're the ones we're monetizing uh, and so on. So yeah, that's different. So there you go. That's a scoop. I've only said that a few times on some stages, but you get the first podcast. That's a, a fascinating insight there too, because you're 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 hinting at there's three stages to your business. First is to get it off the ground, get it funded, get a yeah. team build where, where you're yeah. definitely at now. Yeah. Second is get the scale, and then third is give it back to those who got it to the scale. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and I think that we will start signaling that we are now obviously on the show, but we're going to start signaling that sort of early in the new year to people that also then sign up as and join because this is going to be their tech platform. You know, this is their opportunity. Now, what would motivate you more than like, think about all the reasons to do this. It's like, A, I get to feel empowered that my, you know, life's feeling a bit more aligned, one. Two, I get to signal to businesses that I care about these things and I'll change businesses and we'll tell you about that. And then three, which will come inside the app is that we'll start letting you know when you get other people on the platform, how you've inspired them to change. It won't tell you, person X has just done that, it'll say, there's another 500 kilograms of carbon offset from a person that you brought to the platform. So Leo DiCaprio in three years time will be going out to his base. I should say three, I think like two, two years, go out to his entire, you know, followers and say, I'm a like, you know, zero carbon guy. I, I use whatever renewable energy from this company or, and I'd love you to join me and reduce your footprint too. He'll push it out. They'll all sign up. Right now, we've already built this technology where we can then look back at the people that that person brought and watch how they change. And so we'll tell Leo, hey man, you've brought a million people to the platform. It's not just a click that we can tell you. We'll tell you every day how much more carbon you've saved. And we will be selling something that no one ever has done, which is we'll tell him that he is changing the world in a measurable way. And I think that Woody Harrelson, I'll tell you now, there's a few people out there, I think that will jump on this and do it. Um, so yeah, any influencers listening, we will help you influence the world, not just, uh, I don't know, a few more clicks. Well, that speaks to a couple of different things is that you've, you're harnessing the multiplier effect yeah, and yeah. you're doing that in a way that you can help someone fulfill their status goals, not necessarily their monetary Virtue goals. Signaling. We call it ethical narcissism, yeah. And if you can then give them a measurement on that, you're giving quant to the status, which exactly. also then encourages that person to do it again and again. Uh, yeah. I know that's certainly been part of my, like the last 20 years. If I can get a, a business or a person to convert to better technology, I, like yeah. I just love technology, exactly. yeah. I get a thrill out of that. And I like seeing how new things work. And that's why I'm fascinated about this. Uh, yeah. both the climate area and the and the reducing waste area because yeah. they have business imperatives to them what i wasn't aware of with your platform that i'm i'm now far more fascinated by is that <laughs> is is this bigger uh, effect that you want Vision. to yeah that you want to see happen uh, yeah. where where does the the strategy of uh, releasing this in other countries fit in good question um so yeah, for those listening in New Zealand, we are a little bit like behind the times with the open banking stuff. So I guess, yeah, just when you do sign up, know that this is not the most streamlined version of what it is like in the UK. And one of the, the next market we're going to Australia, it actually is also pretty similar to UK. So, you know, it's a little bit clunky. As you said, you have to remember your password and whatnot. Um, you only have to do it once. Um, and um, we've got all the banks coming soon. And it's, so just the journey's all right, let's say in New Zealand. I mean, we're getting 60% of people 
that download the app are actually linking their bank account, which is pretty good. We've got um, pretty similar metrics in the UK. So the plan to grow this is to get to Australia, um, talking to all the banks um, there. I was on the call with a CEO of an Australian bank, you wouldn't believe it, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, they're all gung-ho about what we're up to. So Australia next, raising some investment sort of early in the new year to make that a really good entry. Um, and then we are like on a two to three year, you know, three, four hundred million dollar capital like growth like plan, which is to really raise the money that you need to get to the US market, to accelerate into Northern Europe, start an Asian pilot. Like we've got our plan, we've got it all mapped out and it is gonna take a lot of money because it takes a lot of money uh, to build big platforms. The beauty of what we think we've got though is possibly something that we may, and again, this is the ideal, if we can crack that growth from user element, which is what the other platforms couldn't do. They definitely, they paid whatever, 10 bucks every person you referred. Do you remember wow. how it worked, right? Uber, yeah. So that's what they used to do to grow that. If we can crack it, like we may not need all that money, but we are modeling off the sorts of platforms that have grown to hundreds of millions of users and they generally need a lot of money. Um, but yeah, we want to be a big Kiwi tech success story, big head office here in Wellington, um, you know, bigger than zero, but you know, the biggest Kiwi company is our plan. Yeah. So what's the, the first step in that? I'm thinking I that, say, yeah. you know, I, well, I, I, you know, through NZ Made, we've got, I'd say around uh, 40,000, you know, core fans of New Zealand yeah. made through, through email and social. Yeah. Um, is part of your strategy through the th that uh, goodwill effect and that multiplier effect to help actually reduce your marketing acquisition yes. costs, which then means you can scale without the same significant capital? Investment. Yeah. I mean, we, it's about like building, you know, alliances and relationships with sort of constituents of people with certain values. So let's say the climate, which is an issue, is definitely um, not obviously necessarily something that is you know perfectly correlated but it will have correlation with say buy new zealand made it's just it's like it's a separate thing you buy new zealand made because you want to support your fellow people that you know if you walk down the street with and there's a lot of reasons i guess the ideal would be to build i mean wouldn't it be great if you know we work together over this coming year and release a you know by local um, wallet, which basically could be used in all markets where it would help you in Australia or in the UK understand what proportion of your spending was going to businesses that were from your, you know, your country. Now, that I think would motivate the 40,000 people on your, you know, list to be like, wow, this platform is like, yep, I can go onto a website and have a look at these, and I see the New Zealand, you know, finding some made product sticker places, but this is all in one place. It's got like history of the last year of what I've done and it's got this, yeah. So I guess we'd love to talk about building these sort of relationships, which ultimately mean the product itself also is um, working for the, for the community. Uh, that's right up my alley. Uh, the, my, the whole foundation of where I'm taking NZ Made is turning it more into an ecosystem play rather than yep. a sticker on a physical product and yep. part of something we've just launched which we'll be sharing with you is an API where you can oh, about it. Yep. just go in and, and grab the the licensed products where I'd yep. love to take it is yep. launch something like KiwiCoin yeah oh and yeah I've got, we've got Kogo coin <laughs> I was flown three years ago to the states was it three years February nearly three years now to meet these guys that were like, we've got to launch like a, you know, conscious coin, actually is what they called it at the time. But yeah, anyway, we can come to that alternative currency. We well, and, and use it as a, um, as just a loyalty scheme so yeah, that you scheme. get the coins as a reward for loyalty, but yeah. that reward for loyalty goes within the ecosystem, not just that single business. Correct, yeah, I mean, uh, and just like the future will be, you've got your API, all of your, you know, is it called license holders or whatever you have, like people that um, are in your membership base. The ideal is that API would include obviously like their logo, but it would be great if you get a little bit of story about that business, you know, and, and ideally, and we can also manage some of this ourselves, but 
we are a data play so that when you walk out of New World and, and Kogo would be like, ding, 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 well done. You know, here not only are the six products that you've now bought that are, you know, Finding Zealand well made recognized, that's 20% more than last month. Well, that we'll be able to pull the stories out of those businesses, as in this is the owner of that business. And you can find out about what motivates her to make these, you know, strawberries or whatever it is. And I think this is the and this is the big power play of the entire platform is it's a full data integration, uh, whether it's Hilton Hotels telling you the closest 10 vegan restaurants in any hotel on the, you know, TV powered by Kogo, whether it's inside flybys, you know, they want to show the carbon footprint of your last, you know, purchase that might attend. What, whatever it is, we want to be the data set that plugs into these data sets like yourself and centralizes sort of ethical data that motivates um, business change and obviously um, motivates consumer behavior change, which is a nice virtuous cycle. That's going to be really useful too when people are outside their normal habit zone when they travel and hopefully when COVID travel, is definitely. vaccine yeah. and solved because we all want to go where it's completely different but actually where we feel comfortable still whatever that restaurant bar or wi-fi yeah. or hotel or backpackers looks and feels like uh, is that part of it as well or is this oh, yeah. the day-to-day -day? you know it's like the just we want to like like mid, mid, medium term because we're not far off but we're not there quite but medium term i mean we want kogo to be the thing that you use to make your decision on you just talked about it like which airline you use where you stay what insurance company you're using whether you're gonna you know buy a certain pair of shoes to take like it is the destination and whether it's using kogo as an app itself or whether it's you're inside TripAdvisor or you're inside Booking.com, our data would help you understand the sort of impact. And I guess in the end, if you become the tool that is trusted, the brand that's recognized, the, the one that gives you that positive reinforcement when you've done something good, I just think it's inevitable, really. It's, it's going to be us, it's going to be others in this space, but right now we'd probably put our hand up as the global category leader on sustainable ethical data combined with transactional and financial data um we're fintech for good i guess yeah so that's great good kiwi ingenuity so it's a it's an app for now but it could eventually be featureized ethics on it'll anyone's a, platform it will be yeah i think it'll, it'll be like i don't know zero myib we, we, we've just signed a partnership with a big bank in the uk to build a tool for their SMEs that allows them to look at the carbon footprint of their supply chain. So like businesses will be about to get a product quite like uh, consumers. And yeah, MYRB zero, it'll be there in, you know, at some point, powered by Kogo, carbon footprint for every SME, and they'll again do the same thing with their supply chain. So you're talking about consumers at the moment, like making decisions. Well, another actor in the economy is the business, as in the B2C business, but they have supply chains as well. And so there's a, again, we can talk about many things that are going on in Kogo, but one of them is, yeah, the early stages of a product that allows businesses to do the same interrogation of their supply chains. And again, same signals, same marketing, same sort of platform play. So yeah, let's go and do it, we say. And that's, you know, that area is just as important, if not more important, because although there's you know, more people than there are businesses. Businesses play an outsized role yeah. in either the energy or the waste or the, the carbon they consume yeah. or use. So, um, that, I mean, that's certainly of interest to the Sustainable Business Council and some of their, yeah. their goals within New Zealand. For uh, sure. Ben, you, you're not doing this all on your own, right? Like, who, who's uh, the team? How have you put this together? Um, well, now we have yeah, a team of about 37. Um, so yeah we started as a charity um nearly 10 years ago and we're sort of yeah, funded by a whole lot, lot of great you know grants and government money for about the first six years um and we fluctuated between sort of two people five people six people and, you know that was great then we founded the company in 2016 um and then have 
raised about eight million dollars or we've over the life really about eight million dollars so we've been invested in um and so now yeah we've grown i mean a year ago i was in london we were based out of google they gave us a free office thank you google i have to say that because they definitely helped is that a, is, anything else more than just is that king's cross office. Is that that yeah. King's Cross? It was in uh, It was actually the Google for startups, so in Shoreditch, but a pretty cool office. Nice. Um, yeah. So we started with me two years ago in London, and about ten of us back here in New Zealand. So that was a couple of years ago. I moved there, set up London office, uh, and I left there about six months ago now. And there was fifteen people in London now in the UK because they've all gone out of London because of COVID, or at least most of them. 15 and then there was at that point about eight back here or seven back here in New Zealand because we focused on New Zealand on the UK. Now there's 25 here in New Zealand um, and about yeah, 12 in the UK and then a couple in Australia. So yeah, there's a big product development team here in Wellington, but we that's we have ambitions to yeah, get another 20 early next year, grow obviously with all the funding we need, it's all a people uh, game. So yeah, we've just got amazing people. We've got you know the our chief data officer in the UK is ex sort of data engineer for banks. He's like taken you know he won't mind me saying like a crazy pay cut like most people do to come work for us. They're like I'm really really happy to work for you. I've been paid ridiculous amounts of money for banks and other organisations that are like not quite aligned with my values. So yeah, it's great. It's a very very solid team, um, and we're here to build a big Kiwi, as I said, company. Um, out of Wellington. And for those listening that want to take that first step, how do they get access to your app and start measuring Isn't the things it, that yeah. matter? Jump on our website, probably first to understand how it works. It's always great to get a little bit of an idea. Um, Kogo is the name, C-O-G-O, and it's dot C-O. So don't put a dot NZ on the end because we've used the global um, URL, dot C-O. So kogo.co, um, or you just go to the App Store or Google Play um, and look up Kogo, C-O-G-O. It's, as I said, BNZ is probably the last, but ASB and Kiwi Bank will be in a couple of weeks. So you can't use it until the banks uh, that you use is connected in. So I would, uh, yeah, download it and we'll notify everyone once each bank goes live. So yeah, and we say, come join the movement. Let's go change the world. Well, good luck on that journey as we head into 2021. I'll certainly be keeping a close eye on what's happening. And if you want to you know, grow your base through the NZ Made group, more than happy to facilitate that because of, you know, you've featureized NZ Made in the app and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah no, we're keen. That's the idea is that the more that we can promote NZ Made or, you know, carbon zero or whatever these issues are that businesses, we, we really want to highlight the ones that are making even small steps. If it's just a line of products that they're selling, it's still a start. And if we can show them that that's driving revenue for them and driving people in the door, they will just do more and more of those products, you know, and that's the theory of change, basic economics. So great to be on the show. Thanks so much.